Hey college football fans, it is episode 55. Oh, I can't believe we've gotten this far, but I'm glad that we have. This is Walk It Off with Chappie, and it's hot today. And you know what else is hot? It's been Coach Jeff Munkin and the Army Cadets, the Black Knights of the Hudson, that brave old Army team. A team that has won nine or more games in four of the last five seasons. Two of those five seasons, they've won 10 or more games, and in two additional seasons, or 2020 and 2021, in their nine win campaigns, they had a game, at least one game, where they lost by just one score. So my point in all this is they were a one score game away in two separate seasons from having four 10 win years in the last five years. That's awesome, that's incredible. And it all starts, like I said, with the guy at the top, Jeff Munkin. A guy who knows the triple option, a guy who knows how to build a culture, a guy who knows discipline. And when you think about a leader of all these future leaders of America on that brave old Army team, Jeff Munkin is the right guy for that. So how are they looking in 2022? Damn good, if I might say. So let's look at the offensive side. Well, first of all, before we get into offense or defense, they have an All-American candidate on each side of the ball. On offense, it's Terrell Robinson. So here's a guy who averaged 8.5 yards per carry on 79 rushing attempts last season. He flirted with the transfer portal a little bit, decided to stay in West Point for the season, and I think that's a huge win for Army fans all over. He's joined on offense by Isaiah Alston, another guy with measurables and with talents that made him want to seek what he could do in the transfer portal. We can't blame him, but he also decided to stick around. So Alston, a guy who goes 6'4", over 200 pounds, he averaged 20 yards per reception a year ago. And even though we know Army likes to run the ball a lot, they don't like throwing it often, they returned their top three pass catchers from a year ago and all three of those guys averaged over 20 yards per catch. So when they do throw it downfield, they're gaining one-fifth of the entire length of the field every time they put it in the air. Um, joining Robinson in that Army backfield, Jacoby Buchanan, who in the last two seasons has totaled 18 rushing touchdowns. He gained a first down on 17 separate fourth down conversions last year. So. Simply put, he moves the chains. Um, they've got a couple other backs back there, but the key to Army's success this year is going to be staying in stride with how they run their offense and how they move their offense. Despite losing Christian Anderson, who was a couple year starter, they do bring back three quarterbacks who have had experience over the last couple seasons. Headlined by Tahir Tyler, um, who's gotten a start in the famed Army-Navy game, so that's big. He started four games last year and in 2020. They also hope to get a healthy Cade Ballard, a guy who Coach Munkin is very high on for his leadership skills, his toughness. Um, and then there's also Jamel Jones, who was really like their fourth quarterback a season ago. So even with the talents of Christian Anderson, Army went about four deep legitimately in terms of guys who can run that triple option offense, and that's really where it all starts. So if they can get consistent play out of one or two, or maybe even three of those guys this year, look for another nine plus win season for the Army Black Knights. Uh, up front, it's helped that they have three offensive linemen returning, especially Connor Bishop and Connor Finucane at center and guard respectively. Bishop is a type who's just tough played through nagging injuries last year, so imagine what he can do when he's healthy, a potential All-American candidate anchoring that Army offensive line. On the defensive side, they're headed by Nate Woody at D coordinator. This is his third year running the defense in West Point, uh, a defense that was 15th overall in total defense in 2021. Their All-American candidate on that side is Andre Carter, an outside linebacker, goes 6'7", 260 pounds. He was second in the nation in sacks last year with 15 and a half. Now, normally you would think 15 and a half sacks, who the hell is better than that? Well, you probably guessed it. It's Will Anderson at Alabama who had, I believe, 17 total sacks. But 15 and a half, nothing to shake a stick at. 
he's going to uh, be a monster, a force, a terror on the outside. And helping him to be even more effective is um, Kobina uh, Bansu, a D end, who I had to look up the, the name because I wanted to make sure that I pronounced it correctly. But uh, he's a big guy at D end. Uh, a rare exception was, was allowed a fifth year in West Point. He'll be teaming up with Chris Fry. Uh, who plays the nose tackle position. So in that 3-4 scheme that Army likes to run, when you've got guys like Bonsu and Fry who are working to occupy the offensive line and Bonsu especially anchoring one of the outsides, it enables a guy like Andre Carter to kind of, in a sense, double team an offensive tackle. And Carter is no match for most running backs who will stay in and blitz pick up. So expect some good havoc numbers. Now they are needing to find some solidification at the linebacker position. They're replacing three linebackers and two guys in the secondary, but the two guys that come back in the defensive backfield for Army, Jabari Moore at one of the corner spots, and then Markel Broton, a field general, high football IQ safety, um, great tackler. He had 80 stops a year ago. Moore had seven pass breakups last season um, has led the team in interceptions the past two years and even took a pick six back to the house against 14th ranked Cincinnati in that 2020 season. Uh, on special teams, place kicker Cole Talley is a solid, uh, dependable place kicker. He's proven that he can make clutch kicks. He was 8 of 11 for uh, field goal kicks a season ago, including a game winner in the bowl game against Missouri. Now, the schedule sets up pretty nicely. Um, even though they're tested early in their first five games, they open up at Coastal Carolina. They have to play host to UTSA. They travel to Wake Forest. And then they also play Air Force in the middle of the season. All four of those teams won 10 or more games last season. So those are games that you can either chalk up as a probable loss or um, they would have to steal one from one of those four teams. And it's not out of the realm of possibility, especially UTSA at home in week two. That could be early enough to get the, uh, the road runners uh, early enough uh, with a lot of high expectations floating around that program. Um, you don't want to play Army when there's unusual optimism and higher than normal expectations uh, for a program like UTSA. But then they've got six very winnable games, Villanova, Colgate, UL Monroe, UConn, all at home. They travel to UMass toward the end of the season, but that should be uh, an easy victory. And then they've got the game against Navy. Navy does not seem nearly as good as Army does this year. Even though the, the midshipmen stole one from the cadets last year, you know that that's going to be burning and that's, that's a, a point of emphasis every year, but more so uh, this year because that would have been the 10th victory for Army last year, a game that they only lost by four points. And then you've got two swing games, Georgia State at home in West Point, uh, a team that they lost to by 33 points a season ago um, out at uh, Center Park Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, and then also a trip to Troy. So those two Sun Belt opponents, um, Troy, They've got a new coaching staff this year. There is a little bit of turnover there, uh, but it's later in the season. So in, uh, I think, early November, that could be a Troy team that's a little bit more established, uh, should be more established. But, you know, if I had to pick it now, I would take Army to, to win that game. So you're looking at um, easily an eight win season for the cadets, possibly nine, possibly 10. So. Let me know what you think about Army football in 2022. And thank you for following. Continue to watch Walk It Off with Chappie. Continue to listen to the CFB podcast. Follow me on Twitter at ChappieCFB. Thanks for all you do, letting me do what I love doing. I'm Chappie, and this is what I know.